Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IHS Electronics. Today we're going to be checking out another ASI, uh, Siemens ASI unit and that is a K45 field unit. This unit comes with a two inputs and two outputs and there's many different types uh, of these uh, field units out there. So uh, we're just going to be checking out just this one today. There is a analog, uh, there is analog uh, version as well, so you can uh, transfer analog signals if you wish. We're going to be checking out that in some other videos. And the reason I wanted to cover this video, uh, this this type of unit as well, is uh, get you introduction to the actual cables itself that Siemens has created. Uh, for you to use. So, uh, and these is uh, outside cabinet units where you are able to just uh, screw in your uh, sensors uh, or uh, have an output coming in. There's two types of cables, which is yellow and black, which we're going to talk that about that in a minute. So, it is IP65 uh, 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 rated unit. So, uh, it can be in a wet and dusty and uh, harsh environment. So, it will be doing just fine. So yeah, so this is what we're going to do today. So uh, if you missed the previous videos where, uh, by the way, we already have uh, set this up in a TI portal. So it's already in our system. We're just going to get ourselves this wired in and have a look how that works. So do check out the previous videos that are part of the S1200 series PLC playlist. So yeah, that's what we're going to do today. So all the related videos and manuals and things like that is going to be in the description below. And also if you haven't checked out the Patreon, that uh, I have recently created, do have a look at that link below as well. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we are. So the first things, let's check out the actual cable. These are the two units, we just looked at it. So uh, cable reels comes like that. Massive. I think they come in a, I believe it's a 50 meters, so 50 meter rails. Unfortunately, you can't get less and you have to pay a full price for the full cable. If you are trying to uh, just to get one meter, you still have to pay full price. Let me just quickly have a look and there's the, brown, the, the yellow one. So yellow one, so where are we? Core 52, I believe that's 52 meters in there. So basically, yeah, so uh, I have done then a couple of cutoffs. So basically cable comes in 50 meter reels and you can't get, uh, you cannot buy a less than that. The actual material, let's just put this in, the material of the actual cable is rubber. It's a really, 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 really interesting rubber. It's sort of a, how Siemens likes to put it, self-healing. So as you can see down here, I'm not sure it's gonna zoom in. Uh, I stabbed it in apparently, but these, as soon as you remove, the pins, as you can see this guy's got pins in the back, it's a sort of uh, self uh, self closes off and no water can penetrate, so it's really good. Standard cable inside, which is a brown and a blue, nothing too too crazy, everything's just normal standard. So the, ye the yellow one, always going to be used to power your uh, inputs and also the controller and also uh, for data transfer. And the black one is going to be just your auxiliary power, which will power your outputs. So that's pretty much uh, what the, the coloring means. So then you will need a uh, back plate. So let's zoom this in. You will need the back plate. These guys are sold separately, so they'll be sold like this. And then you have to go out and buy uh, separately this. The reason behind it, there's two versions for it. So one of them is for the panel mount. One of them is, as you can see, this one's a DIN rail mount. So uh, I think this one, if you really look at it, it's got screws for it. You can even screw it on a panel mount if you wish as well. Also, a bit of confusion. I was looking into the manual itself. So it sort of uh, would indicate which way the cables would need to go. Do they go this way or can they go this way? So basically, which is the way? Because if you look at the cable, it's got lip on one side and no lip on the other side. So... Yeah, yeah, we know pretty much you get the gist. This basically looks like that. So uh, the confusing part is you can go both ways because, again, as we zoom in, that lip needs to sit in this groove. There's a grooves in here. You can you can sit both ways, which is again. So but this does say in the ASI it goes up here, and then you're gonna have a uh, aux power on the bottom. This rubber in here moves around. When I was doing testing. The yellow cable has to be in specific way. The black one didn't seem matter, so the power actually power was still there. But the yellow one has to be uh, going in from right to left. 
So, uh, and that would look like that. So uh, for us to put it in, so let me just zoom this in. So hopefully the camera will keep up with, with us. So, uh, so, uh, so we're going to be going in, uh, which way are you going in? This is, is this the right way? Yes, this is the right way. So, uh, yeah, is this the right way? No, this is not the right way. This is not the right way. So basically when it works out, it's because this cable was laying around, not right, right? So uh, it looks like that. So uh, if you like from the, the top to the bottom, so blue, brown, blue, brown. So then you just uh, fit in and just sort of push it in. So the, the manual is not really clear, unless I'm not reading something in the manual and you guys are watching it, do comment in section below. Say, so, dude, you missed that part in the manual and things like that. Do let me know. Because when I was reading the manual, it wasn't so bloody clear to me which way it's supposed to go. So blue, brown. So on the the, the next one, it actually goes uh, the same. So you sort of uh, put it uh, put it in, and then we just sort of squeeze it inward. So it looks it sort of sits in like that. So obviously, I could uh, I could literally just keep going. But this, this is sort of, if you have cables going around the machine sitting like that, you can pretty much uh, jump on, uh, connect to fairly easy this way. So just clamp onto it and you're good to go. And if you no longer need it, you can unclamp it and good to go. And these pins in here will not let the water pin, pen, water or whatever, will still keep the uh, seal to what is meant to be at a, if it's not stabbed. So it's really good. So after that, you just click the unit on. Here we go. So, and that's it. You just uh, push it, push it together, and uh, then close it off. Not with that kind of screwdriver, with proper screwdriver. So, uh, do it all up. So you can earth it as well in here if you wish. Again, the, the zoom is slow. So that's it. So it's ready. So yellow and black. So this unit is ready. So uh, next thing we need, let's. Check, make sure the address is there. Remember, guys, we already checked out how to how to do the addressing. So this is where the addressing unit goes in here. So I'll plug that on. You does the, the whole thing doesn't have to be powered. So I wanna. There we go. It's already been set to address three. That's his actual. That's his actual address. And obviously, you can change it up and down if you wish. Being a good dude, I'm quite happy with that address. So, and then the only thing you have in here, ASI fault, if you don't have ASI problem, it will show red. And AUX power, as you, if you got AUX power, it will show uh, green. If it is no AUX power, then, well, it's dead. So pretty much nothing's going to be lit. So, and then you have a uh, two inputs and two outputs. So it's a female, and it's a male pin with... No, the male pin's going... Ah, anyway, you, you know what it looks like. So, uh... You will need a M12 standard Siemens uh, connectors, not Siemens. I mean, and standard, standard M12 connectors to it to go into it, go onto it for inputs and for the outputs. So just screw on and screw it in. I'm going to show you in a minute how that works. We're going to create a small program for it. So that will be one for the input and exactly the same is going to go for the outputs. And we can look at the wiring in a minute. Did I cross right there? Come on. Here we go. We got that one in. So here we go. So uh, we'll talk about wiring once we get to the system. So that's pretty much unit is ready to go. So all we need to do is add that to our SI network. And that's what we can do now. All right, so that's wired in. So there's our unit. So with both of the sensors, so what we're going to be using, we're going to be using a uh, just a standard switch. One of them. We're going to get to the wiring in a minute, and we're just going to have a, a basic uh, lamp as well. I already have a little program into the uh, 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 PLC already. We already know how to uh, find the inputs and outputs, how to assign them, and how they get assigned in previous videos. So do check it out. So this is where our yellow wire, as you can see yellow wire goes for AS, uh, brown goes ASI plus and um, uh, blue goes ASI minus. And the black one, as you can see right in the bottom, we have auxiliary power. Again, uh, plus goes into L plus and uh, minus a blue, which we're gonna go in M 
uh, minus. So when it comes down to sensors, so first uh, the sensors it's in first uh, because it's, it's a standard sensor wire, sensor M12 uh, uh, plug. So they, it, because the one I've got in here comes out with a four wires, as you can see, uh, four wires. Uh, before I away with the switch, I know it's a bit messy, but it is what it is. So and as you can see, I'm using a. This is because the, it, it would work as a sense uh, as a switch, like a standard switch normally would do from a three wire sensor so brown would be coming in this is where the power would come out from the actual uh, unit in here and and then obviously uh, your uh, your uh, switch or the sensor you would have would send the signal back out we had the we had the brown k uh, we had the black cable in here to uh, activate uh, whatever you uh, well, well, the activate center the sensor send the signal back. So uh, remember, this is for the three wire sensors only. So, and uh, when it comes down to output, output will work again the same. You're going to use the sensor, a sensor M12 cable, M12 uh, plug cable. And as you can see in here, uh, blue is your uh, whoop, blue is your uh, neutral, no normal minus. And as you can see, I'm using the black one because black one again. Remember, it's a switching wire. So when uh, switching would happen, it would naturally use the black one to output the 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 the, the uh, 24 volt signal out. So uh, as you can see, the brown one and the white one is not used because we are switching. We're using the black one, so blue and the black to switch whatever you're trying to switch. You could switch contact us. You could switch whole load of things. So do check out the current ratings or whichever uh, unit you are using from Siemens manual itself. I'm not sure you can see in here. Whatever reason my PLC is on, but it's flashing red. So we're going to check that out. What is, uh, what is he not happy with? Right here we are. So uh, here's our program. So here's, so here's our unit. So let's go online. So have a look where that problem is. So uh, we can spin it. Oh, it looks like it looks like I might. Oh, because I've been playing around. I think I am plugged in the card. So if you go in diagnostics, oh. Uh, diagnostics in here as an error. Let's jump on that one. Let's have a look what the problem is. IO device failure. Here it goes. And I think I know what that is because if you go, as you can see, there's a question mark on it. And it says PLC CPU. And it says there's a card missing right here. So I know what that is. We're going to sort that out in a minute. So uh, we'll reset that one up. So that's a bit of a full finding for you. So uh, let's go into the network view where we already set up the card in here. So as you can see, the uh, K K45 unit is already added into unit. Uh, so we uh, just a quick reminder: we go into properties and have a look at what address is being assigned to it. So I/O tags. So here we go. There's I/O tags be assigned automatically. You already switched on a lamp on, and if you go into my uh, letter program, again very basic. Just to test it. Come on. And as you can see, there's a uh, program that uh, which I created, the iPod 1.2 will, uh, will activate Q1.0, which has been assigned to our K45 uh, field device. So I've done that. Let's go back on the unit and see how that works. Here we are. So I got the unit right in my hand. So I sort of uh, packed them all in one hand. So uh, let's flip the switch. As you can see, uh, that was a bit of a. Am I having a very loose connection somewhere? Yeah, I'm having a loose connection somewhere. So you can see, when things are getting activated, the, the sensor light will come on and also they will let you know the output light is coming on. As you can see, the lamp comes on every time we are flipping a switch. And that, ladies and gentlemen, how this unit would work with Siemens cables. And yeah, that pretty much will conclude for now, the Siemens uh, SI devices, obviously we're going to be looking more and more and more in the future. We still have to check out this guy, which I think is an absolute amazing unit. So, but anyway, that will be for the next, uh, next time. So, uh, yes, if you like the video, don't forget to smash that like and do subscribe if you're new to the channel. And if you like what we're doing in here, hopefully this gives you a good understanding how uh, these bad boys works. If you see them in a the factory, now you know what they do and how they work and how they can be full funded and things like that. So, uh, so yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.